What's up, how you doing? Here we are, beautiful evening. Beautiful evening today. So we have Corona here, nice cold Corona. Corona. And we have a lime. And we have a little bit of salt. And we have a cold glass right out of the freezer. Nice and cold. I like a lot of lime. And a pinch. Remember, drink responsibly, do not drink and drive. I am home, I'm only having one. You gotta know the limit and end it, otherwise you get radiation sickness or you get the feeling. Siren. That is good. Corona is a good beer. Good quality beer. The colder the better. And you know, of course, you have to have lime. But yeah, this is this is really good. Very refreshing. So my kids have already started school. Already August. In my time, it was unheard of that school would start before Labor Day, especially in August. But now, you know, now a lot of schools start in August. My, uh, my youngest daughter, or my younger one, she started a couple of weeks ago now. And when we get to this time of year, I remember the old days, Jerry Lewis, Telethon. Remember that, MDA? And uh, every year, Labor Day, you turn on TV and there was Jerry Lewis. I remember a few times my parents would be away for Labor Day. When I got older, I didn't tag along, you know. I stayed home, I did my own thing, had my friends, you know. But they would go away on Labor Day and sometimes I'd be home myself. I wouldn't go anywhere. And I remember one specific time I was up I forget what time uh, the, the telethon would start, but I remember I was up at like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was watching the telethon. They have the small acts come on, the, the unknown people at that time. I remember Casey Kasem would be on, not as an act, but he was kind of like announcing. But I came from a time when the telethon signified the end of the summer. End of the summer. And then the next day was school. So one particular year, I think I was sixth or seventh grade, which up until recently, I thought sixth and seventh grade was like a big number for a grade until my kids went into those years and passed them. And then I was like, yeah, it's a little kid, sixth, seventh grade. But up until recently, I thought it was big when I was in the sixth and seventh grade. And, uh, hold on. I have an interruption here. I'm gonna have to edit right now. All right, I am back. That was very brief. That was somebody they accidentally called me, so I had to take it. Anyway, as I was saying, so I was around 6th or 7th grade. I want to say I was 7th. I'm going to say I was 7th because it uh, makes more sense the story if I was in the 7th grade. Anyway, so I remember it was uh, the end of the summer. The next day, school was starting. 
and uh, we had a pizza place in my neighborhood, made really good pizza. It was a hole in the wall, a little, like a closet. You would go there, had a counter, you'd step in, and then you'd order, and th there was nothing else, just, you know, a few feet of room in the, in the back where they would do the, uh, where would, the pizza would be made. Well, they'd make the pizza in the front, twirling it, but the, uh, the ovens were a little bit further back. What is this? A lot of interruptions. So, it was evening time, uh, a little bit dark out, it was probably 8 o'clock, and my father said, what do you guys want to eat tonight? And we said pizza from that place. And so we got into the station wagon and we drove uh, about four blocks, four blocks. And we went in there and uh, my father stepped up, ordered the pizza, but behind us there were these girls that had already ordered and they were just chit-chatting away. And they were seniors in high school. One of them, uh, extra blonde, had her hair dyed blonde, had the extra lipstick on, and she was the leader of these girls. And to me, being in the seventh grade, uh, these uh, 12th graders, they looked big to me. They were like mature and all grown up, and I was looking at them like they were like 30-year-old women. And they were talking, and they were saying, we finally made it. We finally made it. We're seniors. This is it. You know, they were talking about how they finally got to the 12th grade. It was finally, you know, the end. And I was saying, wow, they're lucky. They're lucky. When am I going to get to the end? We got the pizza we left. And I always, I always remember that, you know. And even when I was graduating high school, I was thinking of those three girls that were having this conversation when I was in the seventh grade. I was going into the seventh and how the years go by it's amazing you know one minute you're in the seventh grade and the next minute you're walking around with a cane just uh they fly by but i always remember that they were the way they were talking and you know that feeling of the back to school shopping was happening and i remember in the old days going back to school shopping uh we'd go to like one of those stores uh like bradley's or something like that and you'd step inside from the heat and humidity and they always had the AC nice and cold, which I like. And you'd start buying all these things you didn't really need. I'd get things I didn't need thinking that, yeah, this will make it even better for me. You know, this year, have my little folding uh, folder with the uh, loose leaf papers here and all, like maybe a little calculator or whatever. So I'd buy all this extra stuff. My father would say, you need that? I'd be like, yeah, I need that. He'd say, okay, get it. And about I'd say about 58% of the stuff I bought, I didn't need. Didn't need. And that, that year, I remember, I mean, I remember a lot of things about that seventh grade year, but um, respond to something uh, you know just had to respond to something there it's 
So I'll tell a funny story about seventh grade. Um, so there was a, you know, the school I went to, they, they had a lot of supplies, pencils, things like that in a closeted area. And they used to pass out pencils there a lot, you know, like, hey, anybody need a pencil? They'd open up their drawer. They had a box of these brown number two pencils. They'd pass them out. Well, at some point, all of a sudden, there was no pencils. Everybody was like, yeah, you get an extra pencil. Teacher's like, yeah, we have no pencils. And this kid whose locker was next to mine, they suspected for some reason something was going on with him. And um, they grabbed him and they said, open up your locker. Now, I don't know if that's legal, it's controversial, but he opened up his locker. And the lockers were those tall, long ones. And from the bottom of the locker, all the way to about maybe four and a half feet high, there was boxes of brand new unused pencils, boxes and boxes and boxes. So he would steal them and put them in his locker. And everybody was wondering, where have all the pencils gone? He had, I don't know how many, like over a thousand pencils in there. And he was uh, very embarrassed, very embarrassed. I looked him up one time uh, a few years ago, and he has uh, now, he became a preacher, a good old-fashioned uh, preacher, thick Baptist, and sometimes I want to reach out to him, not for that, I'm not going to embarrass him and tell him, hey, remember those pencils you took? No. But he used to do artwork, he was kind of like, I don't want to say an introvert but he was you know to himself a lot and what he would do is he would take a loose leaf piece of paper he uh, fold it in half and then he would draw these little spaceships on one half all over the place little spaceships on the other half without looking where the spaceships were he would with with his pencil draw these hard circles like really fill them in so they were like the graphite would just become like powder and then he would fold the paper, and then he would look where those uh, indentations were for the for those circles that he had done, and he would reverse it. And on the other side, he would draw on top of those, and then he would open up and see if any of those circles hit the ships that he drew. And this entertained him. And then he would draw comic strips, you know, like little characters, and he would draw the dialogue in there and write, you know, the, the little circles with the arrow to the mouth of the character that was speaking. And all day, that's what he did. He used to grab his pencil like that and write. Maybe that's why he sold all those pencils, like to write a lot, you know. But I, I remember him. Funny stories. Funny stories, and uh, and then I moved on from that school, and I went into a really, really hard school, really hard school. It was like a, a 180, a 180 from where I was to where I went. I went to the school where everything was by the book. Everything was really difficult. A lot of homework, very strict. You couldn't, you couldn't turn and look at your neighbor. If you looked at your neighbor like that real quick back, you'd be like, hey, what's going on over there? You know, they'd look at you and they'd call you out. And um, we had a girl in that class, Eileen. Eileen. Dexy's Midnight Runners had a song, Come On Eileen. And it was out during the time when I knew her. And good looking girl. And she sat dangly across from me. So she was third row, first seat. I was second row, second seat. And my friend Mike was next to me over here. And behind me uh, was a girl named Gina. And behind her was a girl named Amy. And we were kind of like a group, you know, friends. But, um, but Eileen, when that song came out, I would always think of her, you know, come on Eileen. And even now, when I hear that song, I, I remember her because she was Eileen in my class, and that song was a hit. And I love that tune. 
I love Dexys Midnight Runners. Big fan of that group. I think now they're just Dexys. But, um, yeah. She was, she was the, uh, the smart girl in the class. Smart girl in the class. And the thing I remember about her is that I was working at a place, so that's in the future from this story that I'm telling right now. But uh, so she had a brother. They were all adopted. So Eileen was adopted, and her siblings were adopted. So Eileen, uh, I think she was of Irish background, but the brother was Chinese. And I would I would walk down the street and I would see the mother picking him up back then in the station wagon and they would get in the same car and she said that that's my brother so many 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 years went by and I was I was working at a place and I was at the register so um, Chinese guy comes in and gives me a credit card and I looked down and it had Eileen's last name on it had an interruption, I had to edit, had an interruption. Uh, anyway, so it's talking about Eileen, and uh, yeah, her brother, right? So he came in there, I didn't know who he was just by looking at him, because he had grown up. LAPD. So anyway, I looked at the, the card, you know, you always look at the name. I don't know why, but, and I went to run it through, and then I said to him, hey, uh, I go, you have a sister named Eileen? And he goes, yeah, I do, how'd you know that? And I go, I went to school with her, and I remember your mother would uh, pick you up at the bottom there where the reservoir was. And he's like, yeah, he goes, uh, that's me. And he says to me, I want to go home and uh, I want to tell Eileen uh, you said hi. I did say, say hi. Uh, and I said, uh, yeah, and then he went home and he, I guess he told her, and then he came back a couple of days later. He was a regular at that place. Came back a few days later, a couple, and uh, he told me he told her. And I said, good. Yeah, she was a very, very nice person. Um, and uh, became a lawyer. So, when I hear that song, because her name was Eileen, and the song has Eileen in the title, I always think of her, you know, while the song is playing, it just pops into my mind. Another helicopter, that looks like National Guard, that is not the uh, LAPD. Anyway, so that was a good school, I learned a lot of stuff there that I didn't know before. The, the teacher I had there was, uh, they were all good teachers. They all knew their subject inside out. The English teacher there was amazing. I was, uh, I tell people now that she was like probably the best English teacher I ever had. In terms of grammar knowledge, you know, she, she knew everything inside out. She had memorized like the whole grammar book. And um, you little fly, man, They're annoying me, getting on my nerves. So, yeah, I said this uh, story before, but when we were having our eighth grade graduation uh, rehearsals, we would walk, and I liked it because it would cut the, the uh, class. It was a very stressful school, let me say that first. Very stressful. Uh, you just felt like at any moment the, uh, the teacher would snap at you for not paying attention, so you're always like, my eyes are open. And I remember being in English class, and oh man, that class would go on forever. And there was a clock, like to my left, slightly to the back. And I remember every so often I would turn and look, and turn back immediately. And it felt like maybe five, six minutes would go by, and it would be like a minute later. I was like, oh man, it's dragging. And every day for the entire year, that class just dragged. And and that teacher was very strict. You you couldn't breathe wrong in there, you know. So she taught English and history, and and both those subjects she knew inside out. 
Very impressed, very impressed. She died not too long ago. I want to say maybe, I don't know, seven years ago, something like that. And back then I thought she was old, but she, she wasn't, she just looked old. So we were uh, rehearsing for the graduation and we'd go to the gymnasium and then one day coming back a little walk. We had these tennis courts underneath the uh, pine trees. There was always pine needles everywhere. And that day we got back a little early and me and Eileen went into the tennis courts and we sat down on the, on the ground there leaning against the fence and we were kind of talking. And I said, you know what? I was kind of feeling good, you know, that uh, it was a good year. I learned a lot that year and made a lot of friends in that school, good kids, good kids, good families, you know, they, they actually cared about their kids' education and their kids' well-being. It wasn't like other places where like, ah, you want to learn the alphabet, that's fine. If not, who cares? But I was talking to her and I said, you know what, uh, we should have a, a 10th year anniversary reunion. And she looked at me, she was for the eighth grade? I said, yeah, why not? And she giggled and that was the end of that conversation. We didn't say anything. We never had one. Matter of fact, I, I've never been to any reunion, not even high school ones. You know, it would have been fun. But it's only fun when you go back and your friends are there. If you're going to see people you didn't really hang around with, you don't care. But, yeah, I had, it was a good, it was a good school, but very strict. And, uh, and yeah, made some good friends there. But, love that song, Come On Eileen. I could listen to that back to back to back to back to back, probably like 15, 20 times before I started getting tired of it. Everything about it, I don't know. Um, what's his name, Kevin Rowland? I'm a big fan of his, big fan of his. Love the clothes he wears, I don't know where he gets those from, but very sharp clothing. He's got some uh, pants that are like bell bottoms and you know, stuff that I, I would never wear unless I was in the 70s. So, yeah. But that, yeah, that, that year for me, I was a bit of a, you know, sore thumb in the class where I stood out because I was new. I was, you know, the only one in there that was a brand new person. Everyone else was from kindergarten together. Yeah. And I remember there was some people I, the entire year I didn't talk to. They were like too, too good for me. You know, probably like we're gonna talk to him. He's not at my standard. So I never spoke to a few people. Like very briefly, was like hi, and they were looking at me. So. I got stung by a bee at that school. A bee landed here somewhere and I squashed it like that. It stung me before I killed it. They had a small cafeteria, go downstairs, eat my uh, my lunch. I had a friend, his name was Mike, right next to me, and uh, he was always nervous. He was always nervous. It's like any time the teacher would talk to him and, like, you know, catch him off guard, he was always like, uh, I was like, settle down. He rolled with his left, kind of like this, and so he always had ink under here because he would always go over it. Apparently ink doesn't dry fast enough. That was a cat there. So I had him and then Gina behind me. Uh, we became all good friends, that little circle there. And I remember if somebody didn't have like a piece of their homework done, we'd all scramble to help out, get it complete, you know. Turn around, ask Gina, what's the answer for that one? And then she'd help out. And Amy was behind her. And then I had a friend way in the back, last seat in my row, Jim. Big kid. Big kid. He came to high school with me, too. And uh, he was there for about a year. And then he moved. I remember he said, ah, this is my last day. And he moved. Jim. And my friend uh, had a friend named... Uh, Jim. Oh, no, that's it. Uh, his name was Joe. Called him Joey. I never called him Joey. I called him Joe. 
and me and him ended up going to high school together. But I didn't see much of him after uh, after sophomore, uh, freshman year. Freshman year, me and him sat together at lunch, same table, because he was the only one I kind of knew. You know, I mean, Mike went to that school too, but he wasn't in my lunch uh, period. So I would sit with Joe, and then there was this kid, he was a junior, I remember, and he had bought a, uh, he was telling us that he had just bought a brand new GTO. He was getting his license, he wanted to have it, and he was having, he had it painted, fresh paint, red. And then when he finally got it, he wanted to show it to us. And I'm a big fan of GTO. That's the kind of car I wanted. I wanted a GTO four-speed manual transmission with a 400 cubic inch, inch engine. So a lot of da -da -da in there. So we went out to the back there where the football um, field is. And next to it is a parking lot. And he showed it to us, and I was blown away. Brand new paint job. I don't know if he went to Mako, but it was really sharp sharp paint job and I remember thinking this is exactly what I want GTO he's old with a K now but I've never been to any of these reunions I get you know in the mail every five years be like 10th year 15th 20th 50th year um, 60th year reunion whatever I've not gone to one When you're in high school, you feel like you're always going to be young, you know, like you're always going to be that age. But I had a history teacher and he would say it goes like this, meaning the years, the years go like that, life goes like that fast. So one day I was with my father in the station wagon, we were uh, coming home and we were driving by the courthouses in town there and I look out the window and I see a friend of mine, his name was Joe. This is another joke. Me and him uh, were really good friends in high school. And he notices me and he goes, hey, he goes, it goes like this. And I knew exactly what he meant. You know, he was, he was quoting my history teacher when he was talking about how the years go by. And he looked at me and this was a long time ago, but even back then the years had gone by quickly. And he said, it goes like this. Yeah, uh, by the time I became a senior, you know, we had a tight group of friends sitting at the lunch table. I'll tell you a funny story. I used to get lunch at the cafeteria at my high school. I never had a brown bag from home. Um, so I would go in there and it was the same lady for years, same lady taking the money. And it was, I forget what it, how much it was, but I always had a five. I would give her the five and I would always say out of 10. And she's like, ah, you can't get me, you can't get me. So she would give me the, the change back out of five, even though I was saying out of 10, but it was really out of five. So one day towards the end of the year, I said out of 10 and I gave her a five and she starts counting back my change and gives it to me. And I said, I finally got you. And she goes, oh, she goes, you did. I guess if you uh, say it enough times, persistence pays off. Another thing I would do, I would sign the money. Sign the money, my name, blah, 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 you know, signature. And then I would give it to the cafeteria. And uh, I did this for years, years and years, you know, well, well four years. It wasn't like I was in high school for 10 years, but four years, I would sign my name and hand it, and uh, nobody ever said, hey, I got your, uh, your money back. So one day, my friend, I had a good friend, uh, Jeff, and he comes up to me, he goes, guess what? I go, what? He reaches into his pocket, he pulls up a folded dollar bill, opens it up, and there's my signature. He goes, you know where I got it from? I go, where? He goes, I was in Little Peach, it's a convenience store, and I bought a few things, he goes, and I gave money, and I got change back, and I got this, Little Peach, which was probably, I don't know, maybe about six miles from my high school. So it traveled. They say the odds of that, of somebody getting back, your, or you getting back your own dollar after you put into circulation are like one in who knows what. 
you know, going on. See lights flashing over there. Yeah. So yeah, so that's pretty much, you know, when it, when it comes to this time of year, I always think about school, about people I knew, situations I was involved in, like everybody knew me in school. Always something going on, always something. And uh, so I, I think about, you know, those girls at the pizza place that we're talking about, it's their final year, they finally made it to 12th grade. And I always get nostalgic when I think of that. I, I always think about how fast the years went by. Here I am, decades out of high school. And those years back then, I was like, wow, I'm in seventh grade, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, I have five to go. That's history. They went by like evaporated water. Yep. But I, I had a, you know, a fun time in high school. Fun time. You, you think you're going to be young forever. You know, but the years, you know, they catch up. Catch up. I don't know what they're doing over there. Anyway. That's it. Corona beer. A little beepy there. When I hear a beep like that, it reminds me of the uh, Tom Waits song. Was it Saturday, Saturday Serenade? I think it's that one. There's a song, uh, or is it the San Diego one? San Diego Serenade? Hey, one of those songs, uh, as he starts to sing, you hear a beep and it just, when I hear that, it brings me back to that song. I'm a big fan of Tom Waits. Big fan. I'm a big fan of the early years. Love those songs. Those are great tunes. He's a great writer. And I'm a fan of the later, you know, the older Tom Waits, where the voice sounds like Cookie Monster. Yeah, very talented guy. I, I, I've, always, uh, I've always wanted to see him live in concert, but I don't think uh, he tours anymore. If he has, I missed it, but I'd like to visit him, you know. It's north of here. Take my car, drive up there. They get scared. They think, you know, you're a stalker. I'm not a stalker. I just want to say hi and leave. Anyway, that's it. Time to make some dinner. All right, ciao.